yes. So here's the tea. Oh my god. Hello everyone and welcome back to Scoop and Poop with Vivian. <laughs> I have some freaking tea to spill today. So today I'm going to share with you guys the worst pet store horror stories that I've ever experienced slash overheard. Now just quick disclaimer because people on the internet love giving disclaimers. This is not meant to bash anyone. Because I know that there are many pet store employees out there that are completely capable of giving proper information. And in the end, you gotta have a job, I guess. So it's totally fine if you are a pet store employee. This is not an attack on you. It's really just saying that, honestly, people who work at pet stores should be at least partially educated on the animals that they are selling or promoting. Without further ado, let's jump into the tea. Okay, so this first story happened a couple of years ago, and back then I was still kind of horrified of interaction with people. So essentially what happened was I was at a pet store. Now this is a big chain pet store. I'm not gonna say what it is, but I mean, there are only two options in America, so it's one or the other. So as we all know, betta fish are oftentimes sold in pet stores, and they're usually put in these tiny little cups because betta fish are solitary animals and they cannot be housed with other betta fish. Now, I'm not saying that betta fish should be um, housed like this, obviously, because I used to keep betta fish, and they are probably one of the most neglected pet fish, um, along with goldfish. So if you guys have ever bought betta fish at like a big chain um, type of pet store, the cups that the betta are sold in, it'll usually say that this is not a permanent home for your fish or something like that, right? So I'm there at this pet store, and I'm shopping near the reptile section for some extra food for my babies. And so right next to me is the entire fish section. And we all know that small children, for some reason, really like fish. And so I see these two kids are running up to the fish tanks and just looking at them. I'm like, you know what? Whatever, right? So this mom walks in and she's holding another child and she seems to be in a really, really big hurry because she's telling her sons to, you know, go and exit the store and stuff, right? And so one of her sons grabs a cup that has a betta fish in it. This kid is grabbing this betta fish, not letting it go, saying, Mommy, mommy, can I please have the fish? And the mom is saying, no, we can't, we have to go right now. But this kid is very, very persistent and wants this fish really badly and just is sitting there throwing a temper tantrum over a fish in his hands, right? And so the mother gives a big sigh and she looks at one of the pet store employees next to her, literally taps on her shoulder and asks, hey, can they live in this? And even on the cup it says, this is not a permanent home for your fish. The pet store employee turns around and says, yes. <laughs> what? Okay, okay. So she says, yes, they can, but you have to change the water every three days. Three days, y'all. Okay, this is not a betta fish care video, but anyone who has owned fish or has any knowledge about animals in general should know that changing half a cup of water every three days is not enough. Jesus, do you know how much ammonia can build up in that water? And then she points to the section that has betta fish water, really just dechlorinated water that's sold for like twice the price, right? And so she says, yeah, you just take that and you had to change all of the water every three days. Now, just listening to this, you can obviously imply that if she's giving her like honest advice of how to care for this animal, they're probably changing the water every three days. Now, I'm not saying every single pet store of this company does this, but at least that employee was under the impression that in order to maintain the bettas they have at their store, they're changing the water every three days. <laughs> then they were off with their new pets, and I'm standing there like, Bitch, what the f Okay, so that's my first story, and I'm, I still feel really bad to that day. I didn't go up to the mother and be like, yo, tell your son to put down the goddamn fish. But I know that maybe if I'd done that, it could have ended up really bad. I mean, she was obviously in a hurry, and I don't want to get into an argument with a middle-aged mom, because it, man, it never ends well. Okay, so my second story also has to do with fish keeping. Again, I have a lot of stories centered around betta fish because I used to be a huge betta fish keeper. So I go to another pet store and I'm actually shopping in the fish section and I forgot what exactly I was shopping for. Um, I believe it was probably a filter. 
And um, this lady came up to me and she asked if I needed any help. And so I, I said, yes, um, what kind of filter do you recommend for a 10 gallon? And so she said, um, depends what kind of fish are you keeping in the 10 gallon? And I said, a better fish. And she looks at me and goes, um, a 10 gallon is too big for a beta. <laughs> At that moment, literally, like, there's this, like, part of my brain that just, like, took a while to process what she said. And then it went, bing, bing, bing. We got an idiot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, there's a question. Is it possible to give a fish a tank that is too big? I mean, the technical answer will probably be yes. I mean, if you put a better fish into a 2,000 gallon tank, I mean, might be a little bit of overkill there. But she apparently thought that it was too big. And so I explained to her, um, honey, no, it's not. And then she's like, yes, it is. I've kept better fish before. <laughs> she goes, I've had two better fish before, so I would know. Emphasis on before, as in they probably died, we should probably put them in something really, really small, right? Okay, if you work at a pet store, I'm very, very sorry. I'm just picking out the bad apples of this group. <sighs> so I started explaining to her that betta fish actually originate from Thailand, at least the wild type betta. They originate from Thailand and they typically live in rice paddies that can stretch on for extremely long um, distances and they're usually not super duper deep but they aren't exactly shallow either but honestly they do not live in literal mud puddles like people think so I started explaining that you know because their wild uh, ancestors you know have adapted to living in such and such a farm blah 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 she goes I know where they come from <laughs> she cuts me off rudely interrupts she's like I know where they come from I'm like okay good for you right and she's like but she says, trust me, a 10 gallon is too big. They won't be able to breathe. <laughs> so here's the thing. Betta fish has something called a labyrinth organ or a labyrinth lung. And now this basically allows them to take in oxygen from the water surface. So they'll peep the little mouth out and go. <sighs> so in her head, she probably thought because a 10 gallon is a couple of inches deep, she probably assumed that a betta fish would be too exhausted to go up and take oxygen all the time. Which is again not true. It's just like I was like, you know, I'm gonna let it go because at this time I also have a 60 gallon aquarium. So I was actually searching for a bristle nosed pleco. So I asked her if she carried any plecos at the store, and she looks at me trying to be sassy. She's like, "You mean a pleco stomus?" I'm like, "Yes, yes." Like, honey, I I I know the full name. I just what. Yeah, and I asked, yes, do you have a bristle-nosed one? Because bristle noses, they don't get as big as the common pleco. So I asked her, and she goes, no, we don't have any. <laughs> and I was like, you know what, fine, whatever, right? I literally turn around, and in the tank right behind me, there were like 10 bristle-nosed plecos. You know, I let it go. I didn't really care. But just the fact that employee, like, was not only trying to educate me with wrong information, the fact that she was also rude about it too, like I just... Okay, with me, because I am educated on the animals that I'm currently keeping or am about to keep, I'm fine with the fact that employees sometimes with me, like might offer wrong information and if I try to correct them, they won't listen. I'm like, you know what, I don't care. But it's the thing that the majority, the amount of people that go into a pet store, many times they're impulse buyers and they do not know what they're getting themselves into, just like that woman who bought the fish for her son, right? And so the fact that knowing certain employees like them are already giving the wrong information from the get-go before they get the animal, and also like refusing to like learn and actually inform themselves properly, that's what really bothered me is, you know, again, the fact that they were giving wrong information from the start and that a person who didn't know about the animal will go home with that information and that leads to another animal suffering. And so now I just have some quick things that I randomly overhear in pet store. This happened to have a pet store. It's not a big chain or anything. It's a local pet store. So the thing is that they carry many types of exotic animals, but they also carry some problematic species such as savanna monitors and green iguanas. Okay, my camera literally cut off because I got amber alert. I'm so sorry. Savannah monitors and green iguanas, species that are like that, uh, many times get abandoned when they're older because they never, the owners never expect this giant green killing machine. And so I remember I was shopping at this pet store and then a um, girl uh, came in and I'm guessing she's probably around 
15, 16, and it was her birthday because her dad was saying like, it's her birthday, you can get any animal you want, which automatically is a huge red flag for me because, you yeah, know, right? So she comes in and she literally like turns around, sees this, this tank filled with green iguana, and she goes, I want an iguana. Okay. So the thing with this story is that I don't know how educated she is. Maybe she's completely capable of caring for a green iguana. I mean, very few people are, but who knows? She could be, right? But just, it scared me that her dad had allowed her an opportunity like that to say, get any animal you want. And of course, the first thing she chooses is like one of the most problematic advanced reptiles. Who knows if she still has this iguana? I mean, you know, this was something small that has happened, but many times you would just overhear bad advice being like thrown around. So the last story I'm going to share today is actually something where I feel pretty good about because I felt like I did something about this. So I'm shopping around in the small pet section because my babies need treats, obviously. And I see this little girl, she's probably not anywhere older than eight, right? She's very, very young and she was getting a pet mouse that day. So what happened was that she already had the mouse in the little travel container that they uh, give you when you buy a mouse. And so she was shopping for all of the things that the mouse needs. And she picked up a wire mesh wheel, which we all know is not okay because mice can get their feet stuck in it. So what happened was she picks up this travel container looking thing. And I'll put a picture right here. And it is tiny, it's about this big. And she asked a pet store employee, can my wheel fit in here? It wasn't even like, hey, can my mouse live in here? It was, can the wheel fit in here so my mouse can live in there? So the pet store employee, thank goodness, told her, yo fam, you can't keep a mouse in a container that small, right? And so she was crying to her mother because obviously she wasn't allowed to get this mouse now because the container is too small, she can't afford anything bigger. So blah, 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 right? And I literally go up and I'm like, hi, my name is, uh, no. So I go up and I was like, hi, can I give you some advice? And this little girl's like, yeah! And her mom's like, sure. So I told them, put down the little container you have, go to Walmart and get a giant storage tub. Now once you have that storage tub, cut out the lid and cut out one side and put on hard wire cloth. And I showed them a video, um, and I showed them a photo of what a bin cage looked like and I also gave them a link to a video on how to build a bin cage. I told them to get the right size and that's not going to cost anything more than $50 honestly if you do it right. And I told them that that's the best way to care for a mouse. And I looked at the little girl and I said, hey, by the way, with that wheel, you don't want a wheel like that because it actually hurt their feet. And say she get a wheel like this. And I pointed to a wheel with a solid surface and she looked at me and she said, yeah, you're right. I, I've heard this before. I can give them bubble foot. And I looked at her and I was like, this kid is doing her research, yay! It made me feel really proud of her that she was at least doing some kind of research. They walked away that day not buying the plastic container and they also bought the right wheel. So part of me really hopes that they went to Walmart or Home Depot, got that storage tub and made a bin cage. So that's all of the current pet store horror stories I have to share with you guys today. And so thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want. And to those subscribers that always come back and watch every video and comment and say wonderful things, thank you so much. Like you guys are awesome. So please make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get to see everything that I have. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching and bye.